Which meeting software is going to do the job for you? That's today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? I am some kind of thrilled that you made an appointment to spend time with us. We make tech easy so you can do more. More what? Well, the carpets could probably use a good cleaning. Now, couldn't they? Today we're going to talk about meeting software. Now if you are like me, you spend a lot of time communicating with your team and I, because my team is spread over the entire world, spend time using a video conferencing tool every single day. So having a tool that's designed to make our meetings effective is paramount to the success of our business. Now there's lots of different products out there. There's some that are free, there's some that are not, there's some that are browser based, there's some that are not. Choosing the one that's going to work best for you, while it's not, while not one of the most incredibly difficult decisions, is still an important decision. So let's take a look at what I consider to be the most important factors in choosing a great meaning software. And we'll look at three different versions today, which kind of cover the gamut. We'll look at what we use on a daily basis. We'll look at one of the most popular ones. And we'll look at a really nice surprise contender that might make you look and go, hmm, that's pretty cool. Let's start by talking about what I think meeting software should have going for it. First of all, it's got to have good technology. It has to be reliable. You have to be able to engage in really good calls with high quality audio, high quality video, and a robust connection. That is number one. If, if it doesn't cut it in that space, the meeting software just is not going to work for you. And now we see in the ones that in the examples that we're going to show you kind of three different, uh, three different levels of quality from what I consider to be the best all the way down to merely acceptable, but all of them at least meet that standard of merely acceptable. Uh, they have to be easy to use. They have to have easy access. You're going to look for ones that have multiple native apps. In other words, ones that run net natively on a smartphone, on all smartphones and all of the tools that we talk about today have mobile versions. You want to make sure you have the ability to screen share primarily. You might even want to be able to do some whiteboard work. Uh, you want to be able to have inline chat so you can talk back and forth to your, to your, uh, to your colleagues. Uh, it's a bonus if you can record the call so you can share it with others afterwards. And it's got to integrate with calendars and other business apps uh, and have a, a robust invitation system so it's easy to invite people through email or through calendar apps. So those are the kind of baseline to, uh, features that I look for in all of my different meeting tools. Now the three tools that we're going to look at today are Zoom, Skype, and Appear.in. And we're going to start things off with a quick demo of each. And I have enrolled my trusted colleague, April, to join me on a call of each. So let's begin by jumping into a Zoom call. So here we are with April in what is our go-to meeting platform. So we use Zoom on a daily basis uh, through the whole Dotto Tech team. And we've used other tools in the past, but Zoom is the one that we've kind of settled on now. I just switched from go-to meeting to Zoom in my own business because oh. you and I have used Zoom readily and it's very easy to have a quick conversation with people. Um, and I also like the webinar platform. Uh, that it offers. Plus, it's more affordable than GoToMeeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, for sure. And and I'll ta be talking uh, as well, or I will talk about the uh, the difference between meeting platforms and and webinar platforms. But let's just kind of go over the top points of Zoom. Now, one of the things about Zoom, which is the biggest challenge Zoom has, is the fact that it's an executable, so it's not playing back in the browser. Whereas we'll be looking at some other tools that play back in the browser, which a lot of people prefer. And in this day and age having to launch an executable is a little bit of a negative. Uh, but the plus side is Zoom has so much control over then how compression happens and the bandwidth that we typically, well, we don't, we never even think about that. We ever have an issue with Zoom. And when we make a call as far as bandwidth, when was the last yeah. time we had problems? I, I can't even remember. Exactly. At all. And yeah. that's what you're paying for is you're paying for a super reliable platform that's really dependable. And it's got all the meeting tools that you probably require. Uh, first of all, you know, we can mute and uh, the mic and video. One of our team members always goes with the video turned off all the time. She never has her <laughs> video turned on. Um, you can invite new participants into the meeting. Uh, and d depending on your package is X number of people are allowed in the meeting. Um, you can see all your participants here sharing screen. You can control the sharing screen from this, this icon. There is built in chat, which we do use occasionally, but for the most part as a team, we don't end up using the built in chat 
because you want to reference. It's typically speaking, we're sharing files or sharing links back and forth when we use chat. So we find that we go to our communications platform. So if we're sharing something, we'll typically jump in and share it using um, Slack instead. Uh, occasionally you forget and you just kind of drop something in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. But that we, if it's in Slack, it's much easier to find because once this session is over, it's over. So if you want to go back and find the link and you have and you just clicked on it but you didn't copy it, then it's lost and you have to reach out to the person. So that's just kind of meeting technique uh, that you can deal with. Um, really valuable, the ability to record a meeting right here directly in it. Now what'll happen is it takes a little while after the meeting is recorded, it saves it on your local hard drive, uh, but that's great for if team members can't be there. When I'm getting coaching sessions from our YouTube coach, I'll often record that and then I can share it with team members later. So that works out really well. Um, the, uh, the other options are is, is changing the, the views. Right now my video is small, but if we go to gallery view, we can see, uh, you can see yourself a little bit more easily. And this becomes quite uh, a little more pronounced as far as the layout of the screen as you have more people in the meeting. So we use Zoom primarily just for person to person meetings like with April here right now, who's just basically a prop right now. That's all you've been yeah. in this April. <laughs> but <laughs> When you're doing coaching sessions or you're doing small, uh, or you're doing meetings where you're doing presentations, have 8, 10, 12, 14 people in the room, you'll have a film strip, which will allow you to, uh, and then people, uh, good etiquette is, means you mute your mic until you need access. But these tools, again, make it very easy to do that. And I think for this kind of coaching, small meeting metaphor, that Zoom is a, well, it's just been a really solid contender. It's reasonably priced uh, and it does pretty much everything that we want. Oh, and I got to show you in our Slack integration, it actually integrates with Slack as an add on into Slack. So typically speaking, when we're, when we're having, when we're about to jump into a meeting, you can see our Slack conversation going on right here. And I just put in slash zoom in Slack and it creates a session that everybody can just click on. So as far as navigating into the session, it's super simple. Next, let's take a quick look at Skype. Have the typical now familiar Skype ring through. Hey April, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am good too. Let me see. How do we split this up? Here we go. Window. There we go. How do I get both? There we go. Side by side. All right. So there's a few view options. Skype is constantly updating their interface. So Skype has been around forever as a as a as a meeting platform, and it works pretty well. It's really video calling platform. You can incorporate quite a few people for a meeting, but I don't think it's ideal for meetings. It's okay for face-to-face -face conversations like this. The price is right. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> but it's not always rock solid. And so Isn't let's, uh, you know, if we take a look at the kind of the tools that are available to us for meetings, it does have the built-in chat. It does have the ability to screen share. Uh, and add people to the call, which we also have in Zoom. We don't typically find it's quite as rock solid as far as its is, its playback goes. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I had I barely use Skype anymore. Unless yeah. I'm on my phone, I might use it because I'm out and I'm trying to connect with somebody. But we have clients that well, you're in Canada, but we have some in Ireland and Australia, and we've used Skype through that. And it's been a, it, I spend ten minutes trying to get connected. So yeah. that's why we use other platforms. So not quite, now your own experience may vary if you're using it a lot, uh, sure. but for a meeting tool, it's free, it's available, it will work. You don't have the ability to record calls within Skype, which is an issue. So for us, we use a tool called the Skype call recorder. And we especially do this when we do something called a Skype double ender, where we record an interview with people. I'll often use Skype for that where we record an interview because then I can split the sides of the conversation and split us into two separate video feeds and have your video feed and my video feed separate. So from a presentation and a video creation point of view, it's actually a pretty nifty tool, but it's, as we say, it's not our first call for meetings. And the third and final contender is a peer.in, which to be honest, has a special place in my heart. And there's a couple of different ways to invoke or to start an appear.in session. Uh, but the cool thing about appear is it is browser based. So it's going to run and play back in your browser, which we find incredibly convenient. So you can visit appear.in and all you do is you create a room in appear and then you can start talking with people. There's no cost. There is 
premium versions of it that has some extra features available, but you can start and use this for free uh, right out of the gate. Now, the way that we've been using it historically, before we bought our Zoom subscription, is we would be in Slack, and within Slack, you can do this. I can go slash up here, watch this, and then I just name my room, and I just name the room Dotto Tech, which I could have done in that browser, and then we just click on that little link in our in Slack, and it launches the room. So that's the exact same as if I'd written in the word Dotto Tech over here in the browser, and then launched it. But because I did it in Zoom, April saw it in our chat and you were able to click on the link and join us in this room, right? Yep. Now, Hello. since we've used this last April, do you notice how much cleaner the interface is? It is. I know. I was I was like, wait a minute, I don't remember this. Yeah, it's very professional. It looks it looks good. So up here used to have smaller video windows and a little lower quality. Now you're not going to get the same bandwidth consideration as you get from a Zoom but you get incredible convenience because it's free, it's ubiquitous, and it's browser-based. So you don't have to load an application in order to use it. Uh, oh, what did you just do? You just, they still got the little emoticons things that they added. So, I didn't realize it went on the screen like that, sorry. Yeah, no, that was very cool. What did you click on to do that? Oh, the stickers. Yeah, stickers, yeah. Oh, so I can, I can give you a thumbs up right there. Is that, yes, there it is. Okay, so you can have a little bit of fun with it. But from a meeting perspective, you can have multiple people in the room with you at the same time. You can invite people in the room or you can just copy this link here in the top. And by copying the link, you can send it by email or message to invite other people to join you in the room. You have control over turning off your cameras and microphones here. It's very, very, very well designed from that perspective. You have the ability to share the screen to do the sh screen sharing, you actually have to add an extension to your browser in order to do screen sharing, but it's got all the screen sharing built in and you have the little bit of fun where you can go and you can kind of, the stickers, which will allow you to let people know that you're just banging your head against the wall. Okay, there. okay, April, having a little bit of fun. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite tools. Uh, and one of the, everybody who I show it to is shocked at how good it is for how free it is. And it, you know, Realistically, I, I don't know why we've never actually gone and, and said we're going to purchase this instead of Zoom because it's it's I think it's 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 worth considering. I, these the, the folks at up here have just done a spectacular job of so building up the platform. Let me ask you, though, a webinar perspective though, you couldn't really use this tool, could you? No, it's a meeting tool. It's not really designed for webinars. Uh, you know, the, the, the end of the day, what is the pricing? Let me see the pro version. I'm just taking a look. I haven't even looked at it recently. Uh, you can have a, only up to 12 participants is, is the total number. So for free, you can have four participants in the room and you can have 12 participants if you, um, if you, uh, if you buy the, the $10 a month version. And the other thing I don't see is just let's see if they have pro screen sharing, which is better. Oh, you can do more with the screen, full screen. And yeah, they don't have any recording built in. So that's, that's, that's an issue, uh, unless I, unless I missed it, but I don't see it there. Uh, but so, so it's not really designed for webinars. It's designed for meetings and small group meetings, only up to 12 people. And I think we can do a few more than that in Zoom and you can certainly buy licenses in Zoom to do more. But for small teams with the kind of integration and the free aspect of this, this is a, this is a terrific meeting, meeting tool, appear.in, well worth looking into. So there you have it, three different tools with three slightly different approaches that all do one thing very well. They all allow us to have online meetings really effectively. If you happen to live in a Microsoft ecosphere, you use Office 365, look no farther than Skype. Skype is going to do everything that you need and integrate it all right within the rest of your productivity system. Now you can also use Skype if you live in the kind of the world that I live in, which is primarily Google and Apple's kind of ecosphere. Uh, but I've chosen Zoom uh, just because technically Zoom just works so well. I think I pay $15 a month for Zoom and it has a nice upward mobility path where you can actually get into doing webinars with it. Uh, a little bit limited as far as the webinar applications goes, but that's a topic for another demo. Uh, but it works based on having rooms uh, where you create rooms, you can share links, you can integrate it really nicely with most of your business applications. You saw in the demo how it's integrated with Slack 
for us. But I've also got it integrated just with my calendar. Watch what happens if I create a new appointment in my calendar. Because I, create, I installed the Zoom Chrome extension in my browser and I use Gmail as my calendar, look here, I can make any meeting or any uh, a calendar appointment that I'm creating a Zoom meeting. And when I do that, it allows me to select all of these different options allowing people to have a password, use my personal meeting ID, which allows people to come into my room that I create, add watermarks, uh, and record the meeting automatically so we know it's going to be recorded. And also even set up alternate hosts for allowing other people to present within the webinar. Really sophisticated and really efficient for, for so many different types of business applications. So this integration with the rest of your business uh, tools, really important. And then there's one that I just, I can't help but smile because these guys just keep improving this product and it always delights me. And the fact that it does so much for free with the four people in the room and all of it and, and how easy it is to integrate uh, has left a peer.in, just kind of one of the darlings for me uh, of, the, of the business. It's not as sophisticated as a, as a Skype or as a Zoom but darn it all, it's, it's, it, it works really well. At $10 a month, you get a whole bunch of extra features. And it's the only one of these tools that you don't have to run an executable in order to use. It runs right in the browser, which a lot of people are going to find far more appealing than having to run an external executable in this day and age. Regardless of which meeting tool you choose, Online meetings save us so much as far as time. They make us more efficient. Uh, they keep us home more. Online meeting technology is a boon for all businesses. I hope you found our video today to be useful. We'd love to hear your comments and suggestions in the comments area below. And please don't forget to subscribe to the Dotto Tech channel. Every week we bring you more videos, all designed to make you a little bit more efficient. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.